Hi, welcome back. I hope you are feeling peaceful. As a part of this video, we'll understand what are the different components of the computer. Let us say, if I ask you a question, what are the different components of the computer at a very high level? What would be your answer? You're thinking, right? At a high level, components of the computer are divided into hardware and software, isn't it? So you do have multiple hardware components like monitor, you have RAM, you have disk, you have printer, all these things are hardware components. And the software which is needed to work on, that is also is one of the very important component of the computer. Now that we understood at a high level, you have hardware components and software components. Let us try to understand hardware components. My question would be, what is computer hardware? Computer hardware is a collection of physical elements that constitutes a computer system. Pay attention here. I'm saying collection of physical elements where you can feel, you can touch them. So that is a computer hardware, okay? So it may be referring to the any physical parts like monitor, mouse, keyboard, hard drive, and many other units of the system. So they are the hardware components. Now that we understood what is computer hardware, let us understand what are the important components within the computer hardware. First and foremost thing is input devices. Input devices are pieces of equipment that are used to provide the data and control signals to information processing systems. It can be any device. It can be a mouse. It can be a keyboard, which will provide the data or a signal to the computer. They are referred as a input devices. So within the input devices, we have keyboard, joystick, mouse, a web camera. We do have scanner, touch pads, pen tablets. Okay, the one which I'm using now, all of them are input devices for the computer. How about output then? What are output devices? Again, it's a piece of computer hardware equipment that are used to communicate the results of the data processing carried out by an information processing system. So let us say you are using a computer, you have given an input to that. So until and unless you see that output, how do you know that computer has done a processing or not? That is where output devices come into picture. So you will have a results displayed to the user. That is where output devices come into picture. Okay. So in a way, they convert the electronically generated information into human readable form. What are the different output devices? We have a printer. We have a monitor, which we'll be using left and right. We do have a, again, a different kind of a printer. We have a projector. We do have a music system. So all these are the output devices. So if you're talking about the computer hardware, if we don't talk about the motherboard, then it is not complete. What is motherboard then? It is nothing but a circuit board. And it is one of the main component of any of the computer hardware. Motherboard is a circuit board that lets other components to communicate. So through the motherboard only, other components of a computer communicate to each other. For that purpose, it has ports that face outside the PC's case as well. It is believed that motherboard stores a low level information, even though PC is switched off. Next important component is central processing unit. Central processing unit is referred as a brain of the computer. You know, without brain, can we really think or talk? We cannot, right? So central processing unit is 
the brain of a computer it in a way cpu consists of all the circuitry needed to process the input data store the data and give the results what happens is cpu is constantly following the instructions provided by the computer programs so like which data to process without a cpu you will not be able to run the programs it performs multiple calculations and we can also vary the speed so whenever you are trying to do the intense operations you would need a more powerful cpu it can be processing of the large amount of data if you are trying to edit a high definition video during those tasks which are very intensive you would need a powerful cpu then comes the random access memory ram random access memory is a hardware where the os application programs in current use are kept so it is a temporary memory the moment you switch off your computer whatever you are working on will be lost so that is the reason it is called as a temporary memory ram is very very important if you want to work on multiple applications parallelly so let us say you have opened a one browser okay so certain amount of ram is allocated for that so whenever you want to work on the multiple applications concurrently that is when you would need a ram and also you would need a better ram if you want to work on multiple applications simultaneously as we already understood ram is a temporary memory your computer needs a place to store the data permanently right that is where hard drive comes into picture hard drive consists of a spinning platter it's kind of a disk you already know and also you have a arm from which you can read the data hard disk drives were very widely used almost 20 years but what has happened is now with the advent of the solid state drives hard drives are slow they are kind of slowly being replaced by something called solid state drive so what is solid state drive solid state drive is a storage device that allows reading and storing of the data permanently without a power supply like it uses flash memory like device to store the data so it is definitely faster than traditional hard disk drives as of now they are bit expensive but eventually they may become economical for the common users so if you want to make your system faster better use the solid state drive wonderful then we understood what are the two important components at a high level that is hardware and software and also within the hardware we understood very very important components thank you you have a wonderful time mm -hmm.